It looks like I have another keyboard review to do. This one I got on Amazon for an amazing price. Uh, it was actually $18 Canadian uh, after I checked out, which is really good. Uh, I'm not going to hoard it. I'm not, you know, I don't need more than, well, really I don't need more than one keyboard, but I have a couple uh, with different switches that I use for different purposes. Uh, this one I don't need, so uh, I basically bought it for somebody else, but uh, I want to review it first. So I want to mess around with it for a bit, let you guys know what I think about it, and then, yeah, go from there. Uh, so anyways, the brand is O-Motion, which I've never heard of. It's a mechanical keyboard. Uh, apparently it's the MK201. Uh, when I bought it, it didn't have any of that information on the Amazon website. Um, I don't buy tons off Amazon, but from time to time I do. And sometimes it can be hard to find info, but you know, there's lots of reviews on there. Uh, the reviews are five out of five pretty much across the board. Um, not that that necessarily means anything, but uh, yeah, I'll take it as it is. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty much going into this one blind. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a uh, pretty low budget. Even the full price is $51.99 Canadian. I saw, found it on Amazon.com US too, so uh, you can get it in the US as well for that currency. Um, so even at the full price, it's really good. So, um, I have another blue keyboard that I'm going to be, uh, that I'm giving my partner actually. So um, I'll do a comparison to that too. Neither of them are cherry switches, but they are blue switches. So let's have a look. So pretty minimal packaging, which is nice. Don't like over packaging if possible. fell on the ground, don't know what it was. Uh, so user manual, I, it doesn't say a lot if it has, uh, definitely has RGB, at least according to the website. Looks like it does have a variety of settings here, so I'll go through those uh, as we go along. It's got this weird, that's interesting, I guess to keep debris out of it, that's kind of cool. I've actually never seen that before on a USB ever. Cool. Uh, this has got a really nice braided cable, actually. Um, flexible, not stiff. Actually, it's very flexible, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it looks that's surprisingly good. So it's not a full keyboard. It doesn't have a numpad, which I used to be super advocate for numpads, uh, and I still use them quite a bit. Uh, but I actually have an external numpad because I like to minimize my space, and I actually have to write quite a bit. And... Uh, when I have a full keyboard, it's just kind of annoying. Um, so I have an external one. I don't know where it is. I got it at, I think, like Valley Village or something um, in Canada, which is like a kind of like a thrift store kind of thing. Um, and I use that, and I've had that for years, so that's fine. So right off the bat, the keycaps, uh, you know, it's not the best printing. Uh, here, let me, uh, let me turn this light on there. You're going to get a bit of glare off it, but it should be able to get little bit more light on it. It's pretty dark in this room, so. Not the best printing, um, but it's okay. Definitely not, uh, was it double stamped keycaps or whatever, compared to, this is a uh, one that I reviewed recently Oop, on my channel. Uh, superior printing on that. If I can get it to focus. Come on. Much superior printing, and uh, it's, it's the plastic is a higher quality. Uh, on these here, but whatever, depends what you're looking for. Uh, for $18, I mean, well, I'm not gonna complain. Okay, and the, in terms of the, the flex of the keyboard, there's none, it's, it's uh, no flex at all. It's actually quite light, very, very light, but it doesn't feel super cheap, actually. The back plate is, uh, this is metal, which is nice. That's probably why there's no flex, whereas the bottom is plastic. Oh, it has a, uh, keycap puller actually built into it, which is kind of cool. Flip up feet. Uh, this is nice. You can actually set the cord to the side there or out the back on the other side. It's fine. Nice big rubber pads there. This is just accenting. Um, but yeah, pretty good. Um, it's fine, I guess, the keycap puller there. It's neat that it's stuck to the bottom. So it's not wireless, which is fine. Um, let's plug it in, because I want to see if there's any input lag or anything like that. Ugh, it's hard to get off. Um, I'm just going to open up right away. It's already working. 
instantly. This is apparently going crazy. Recognized as a Omotion MK201 keyboard. So yeah, Windows knows what it is right after that. Okay, so let's do a little typing test. So in terms of blues, I actually have in another province, unfortunately, a uh, uh, Black Widow, Razor Black Widow with actual cherry blue keys. And the only problem I find with that is it's, it's so easy to press the keys on that one to the point of like, I can just place my hand on it and we'll press. This one has enough, enough uh, actuation force that it's not gonna be like accidentally pressed. definitely bottoming out, but because it's metal on the back, it's it's not as like that plastic on plastic sound. But if you type gently, so it's pretty, it's quiet, I guess, I mean, it's loud because of the, the blues, but it's not like clacky, 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 but if you can type, some people type really hard. Let's do a test of that. And it's pretty loud. Um, but yeah, let's do a comparison to, uh, this is like, an, it's called Extreme Gaming. Um, I got this from the source, and I got this for really cheap too. Um, this feels substantially heavier. It's, uh, it's kind of dusty because it was sitting over there. It has a full uh, numpad as well. But yeah, let's do a test on this. Okay, so I've also had a, in, I had in the office a, a Red Dragon blue keyboard, um, which does again feel different than the Cherry. This feels like the Red Dragon one. Uh, very, very, very similar to the Red Dragon blue keyboard, which is actually really nice with the blue switches. It's, it's a good keyboard actually. This one feels okay, but I was never super impressed with this one. It, it's all right, I guess. I mean, it has a lot of wobble on the keys like a lot of wobble on the keys. It was fine. I mean, I paid almost like, I think I paid like 20 bucks for it and it was right when I moved here from across the country. So I was fine. It has the drainage holes. It was okay. Someone else will enjoy it. I'm not gonna hoard it for no reason. This feels much nicer actually. Yeah, it feels kind of something like the Red Dragon with a little bit more actuation force, um, but closer to like an actual cherry blue, I guess. A little bit more actuation for us. Okay, so that's enough typing. Uh, I know some people like to hear a lot of typing, some people hate it, um, but that's nice. Uh, the RGB is fine. I don't, I'm not interested in it, but let's play with it anyways, because some people are. Okay, what can I do with this? Press SL to switch between, da, 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 da. what's SL? SL, up here. Okay, so there's a dedicated button for that. There's P5, SL, and I think that says P8. So that's, I guess, off. Let me turn off that because I'm trying to demonstrate. Actually, no, I'll turn off the lights altogether because I'm trying to demonstrate the lights. So let's have the lights, the light show. Okay, it's pretty cool. That's static. If I were to use RGB, it would be that, just static, personally. The flashing would be annoying to me. Um, that's actually pretty cool. It's got the WASD here and then the num key. This is, this is a good setting for me, actually. If I was gonna play games at night, um, this is a nice setting here. Escape key, WASD, and your, in your directional key. So this is, uh, this is what I would use if I was working at night in terms of playing games. This is actually a really nice setting. Um, I've never seen that on a keyboard. So this one's good. This is annoying. This is what I'd use in the day. And the static one, I probably would use the static one if I was working late at night. Um, 
Oh, that was pretty cool. So that's the static. So personally, I'd use either nothing. I would use this probably at night if I was typing in this room and I needed to, wanted the light off for some reason because my eyes were burning. Uh, or I would use that WASD, which is pretty cool actually. So let's uh, go back to the full mode, see what else we can do. Okay, so that's that there. It says here that it has total of six sets of user-defined modes. So it looks like you can actually define modes. I, I'm not really gonna get too much into that, but apparently you can do that. Function and insert. I don't know what it's doing. Function delete. Whatever. Uh, so there's some settings apparently you can do, which is cool. Um, yeah, so let's play with some things that I actually would care about. Function and up uh, to increase LED. That's probably already max. Looks like you have an indicator there. Those will flash most likely when it's maxed out. Yeah. So that's the dimmest. So it looks like dimmest. So setting one, two, three is max. So there's three dimness settings, uh, which is nice actually, considering it's a full LED um, RGB. Uh, left is to the speed. So let's go to something that has some pattern. So you can go function left to make it go slower, which works. So it has setting one, setting two, setting three, setting four. So five settings for speed, which is actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it looks like that's, oh, here we go. So four seconds, six, eight, 10, and 12 seconds. Very cool, actually. Function and W can exchange WASD. So let's try that. So let's go back to that WASD one. Wherever that was, there it is. Uh, function and W. I have no idea what that's talking about. Can exchange the WASD up, down, left, right. Not sure what that means, uh, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, the Windows lock key, so you have Windows lock function, which is really nice. Um, so I guess that's good for, I'll turn the lights back on. Uh, the Windows, basically this is like a kill switch. I, I don't know what the correct term is, but it kills off the Windows key so that if you're playing games and you accidentally bump Windows, you know, if you have to use shift in that, um, it's not gonna all of a sudden close your window or stop your game and go uh, bring up the menu, which is highly annoying actually if you're playing a game, I guess. For me, I don't play online competitive games really, but if you were playing, uh, I guess I have played Diablo and stuff, but if you were playing, um, you know, like a shooter or something, that's the gate, you hit that and you're game over, you're basically gonna die. So that's highly annoying. So being able to hit function and turn hit that to disable windows, which works, uh, I can show you. I suppose. So Windows key not doing anything. Let's hit function Windows. And there you go. So now it's working. So that's actually a really cool feature. You can disable the Windows key, um, which I would probably leave on all the time because I never really want to hit the Windows key unless I'm doing something specific, like bringing a PowerShell. Function and caps lock is caps lock. Uh, I don't know what the difference is with that caps lock function and PU PU what is PU PU is over here oh page up okay six keys conflict free switch oh okay so that's cool let's try that okay so let's see if, if, if that's n key roll if that's what that's talking about so let's go um, let's get a cool setting here and we'll do that that's cool so Oh, that apparently. Yeah, so they all work. You can get apparently lots of them. Function page up. Is that N key roller? What is that? No, I don't know what that does. It still has N key rollover. Um, function page down says N keys conflict free. Uh, I have no idea what those are. Uh, if you're watching this video and you know what six key conflict free switch or N key conflict free is, uh, let me know because I have actually no idea. Uh, is that a right click key? Legitimately, is that a right click, click key? Let's try it.
Hmm, I'm not sure what that is. It says right click. Have to function in there? No idea. So that says right click key. I thought that was just like a menu drop down in most software. Whatever, I'll have to look up what that is. So that's another one. And then you have media keys. So you have uh, um, my computer, Internet Explorer. Let's hit it. Let's see what happens. Oh, it just, so it's not actually Internet Explorer. That brings up whatever your default browser is, which is cool. Um, is this settings? It doesn't do anything. Okay, so anyways, it's pretty cool. Uh, the media keys are all good. Uh, the typing feel is really nice. The whole keyboard is super light. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of slide. It's, it's okay. There's a little bit, but it's not crazy. Um, it's really, really light, though. Like, I don't even know how to... Yeah, I mean, like, a pound? Maybe two pounds? Yeah, so it's not super slidey, despite that. Um, but the main thing here, I guess, you're paying for is you're paying for the RGB all the RGB settings, which are pretty cool. It's pretty slim, you know, there's, there's not a lot of like bezel area over here, so nice and slim. Uh, the, the brightness is really bright on that, but uh, you're actually getting a really nice typing keyboard, um, surprising, and I type quite a bit, so. So yeah, so if you want a really good typing and you're a typing enthusiast, you know, you do essays or you do coding or whatever it is, uh, typing feel on these specific blue switches is really nice. I am actually impressed with that. Um, let's have a look at that in a second. I'll turn off the, uh, here we go. Um, and for gaming, I mean, blues are decent for gaming. They're nothing special. But the actuation point is, uh, let's see. Right there, halfway down. Normal. Uh, keys are wobbly. So definitely wobbly. The keycaps are, you can see that, they're definitely wobbly. Probably this is how this, the other one started out before I used it all the time. So there is a bit of keycap wobble, but it's because, you know, they're just resting on the uh, keycap there. There's nothing bracing it. Um, whereas like something like this one here, there is wobble, but it's, it's less. But they're still on there. Um, but when you're actually typing, they don't feel super wobbly. I don't feel like I'm uh, going to be inaccurate with that. In fact, when I was typing, I had zero errors. Um, which is not common for me. I usually have errors. I can't read that. I'm going to try to cut for half a second and see if I can actually read that uh, key, that uh, key cap, the um, switch there. Okay, so I removed the key cap there. Uh, that is an Outimu blue switch. Uh, so if you've used them before, that's, I guess, what you'd expect. It might be hard for this to actually see it there. I mean, I don't have a macro cam, but that's what it says on it. Interestingly, the other one that I was using is also Outimu. I don't know if they're an older version or what it is, but they do have a different sound. Let me go in here. You know, there's obviously a difference with keycaps and that, so the actual typing sound is gonna be different on different keyboards. This is a plastic back, this is metal, but let's go and press the actual key. I wanna bring the speaker to it if I can, or the mic. So this is higher pitched. It's actually slightly quieter and slightly smoother. So it has a little bit, I don't know if it's like a, like a little bit of a grainy feeling in the middle. It's totally fine. You have to be a pretty big keyboard enthusiast to say that there's a significant difference between these two. I don't think you'd really notice the actual switches themselves. A lot of it comes down to the keycaps. Um, neither of them have great keycaps either way. Uh, they're kind of both budget. Uh, you know, this one here just has um, some of the stuff printed on it. Um, same with this one here. So neither of them are premium keycaps, um, but the actual typing feel on this keyboard up here, the new one, uh, is better possibly because of the backboard or just the way they're designed, but it actually feels nicer um, than this one. But there you go. There's the review. Um, if you're considering it, uh, I mean, at 50 bucks, approximately Canadian for a new one on full price, uh, I'd, if you needed a, a mechanical keyboard, this is a excellent intro keyboard. Um, I mean, I type all the time and I've used a variety of key caps or uh, switches from real blues to knockoff blues. These are their proprietary, they're not knockoffs, this is their own brand. I've used 
uh, buckling springs, I've used membranes, I've used scissor switch, I've used the old chiclets, the new chiclets, I've used really everything, um, except reds, I've never used reds. And uh, you know, you're not gonna be compromising using this keyboard. Um, you know, it doesn't have all the crazy features, but if you want something solid at 50 bucks, great. And I'm sure that it will go on sale at some point. I mean, I paid 18, um, but I've seen it up for like $30 on a regular basis. So there you go. Uh, that's a review of the keyboard, a pretty solid. Uh, I'm gonna give it away to somebody that I know because I've been converted recently to back to Browns. Um, I've been using Master Keys, Browns, but they're another province. And I got this new keyboard in Browns and it's just really nice for what I do. So there you go, thanks for watching.